CO2. How practical is it? Thank you so much, Workshop Girl 420, for asking a great question. Hi there, I'm a new grower. What does it mean to run CO2 in tents? Please explain. Are you tired of getting in crappy advice from your local hydroponic store or having to search all over forums to get advice that only takes you in different directions than solving your immediate problem? Well, join our membership for $50 a month. You get direct access to me. We'll connect on WhatsApp app. And just like this gentleman that started back in July with us, as problems arise, we are here for you. So first off, let's get into the basics. Plants breathe CO2 and excel O2. I remember reading in a book a number of years ago and actually seeing a picture. We probably all have actually read the same book. I think it's The Grower's Guide or something like that, The Grower's Bible. And what was really interesting, if I remember straight, that in the picture, they said that if you ran CO2, it would actually make the flowers larger. And it's really interesting behind this, right? Because from that one picture in that book, millions and millions and millions of dollars have been spent trying to shortcut the path of working hard to just get good product. Or hopefully I said that right. Yeah, basically from that one picture, people have just been trying to shortcut the process of trying to learn how to grow this plant properly. So let's just be really clear. I do not recommend ever buying CO2 tanks or CO2 generators. I would recommend buying a water-cooled CO2 generator under very specific conditions, and that would be only massive growers that are growing at least 3,000 square feet. For us personally, we had one single water-cooled CO2 generator that was actually producing CO2 for over 25,000 square feet of growing space so for our mushroom farm and it was really interesting okay so I think just to be very clear for you guys the only co2 generator product I would ever recommend anyone purchasing unless you are growing this size of square feet of space is the mushroom bags and the mushroom bags look like this right here and I really do love their products these things produce co2 for about six months I personally would recommend buying a couple of these if you are growing in tent or in a room or whatever just buy five or six of these and just hang them on the top of the roof and I guarantee you this is going to be cheaper and easier and you'll be able to get two grows off for two to three four hundred bucks versus going through the process of dealing with co2 tanks and regulators because the the tank and the regulator itself because normally most doors will end up requiring you to put a deposit or buy the first tank so that right there is about a hundred dollars to two hundred dollars and then the regulator is going to be about another hundred dollars and then from there, every single refill is going to be about 40 bucks. And that refill is going to be pretty much like every single week, especially as you get going. I guarantee you, you're going to bleed your tanks dry very quickly. And then most people end up getting caught up on if they get the CO2 tank, they need the CO2 regulator, and then they need the CO2 monitor, and then they need the monitor that releases the CO2 at a specific amount so you're not wasting all the co2 in your tanks before you know it you start spending thousands of dollars around this whole co2 direction and you're not focusing in on the basics around your plants watering nutrition light bugs the stuff that is going to happen 80 percent of the time versus the co2 is you're you're dropping two thousand dollars even more in the hole than you, what you should even be so just to make sure i have answered your question co2 in tents can be tanks with regulators it could be mushroom bags it could be co2 generators or water-cooled co2 generators for large rooms although what i really want to get into on this video is just the understanding that there are no shortcuts in growing guys let's say this one more time there are no shortcuts in growing if you want to grow top shelf product for yourself if you want to grow for your friends for your family any of that type of stuff don't get caught up in the co2 direction just get a decent light source get a growing environment going whether it's a tent or a room or a greenhouse or a grow bed or whatever just space for you to work put down two to four plants 
give a small little bit of variety, grow from seed, get a clone, whatever it is, put it in the ground with some decent soil, create a consistent environment, give it a little nutrients, and watch how the plant grows for the entire season. Watch how those four plants grow for the entire season. When a problem rises, like a bug problem or a mold problem, get on YouTube, watch some of my videos, post a question, whatever, and solve that one or two problems. And then at the end of the grow, harvest your product and compare it to an $80 eighth, a $60 eighth, and a $40 eighth over at the club. And very quickly, you're you're going to know where you're at on the top shelf versus the mid shelf and lower quality then redo the process again and again and again at that point you're going to have a trend line and some real understanding of how these plants grow and their general problems they run into as well as what they're actually supposed to look like you know at different stages then at that point when you have a solid trend line after a number of cycles a nice baseline then start to incorporate these additional additives into your room like co2 mushroom bags or at that point incorporate a co2 tank into your room even if you have a massive ass grow, I still wouldn't be messing with a CO2 generator until you have a couple grows underneath your belt. It's just another problem. You don't even have the experience to identify whether it's even helping your grow room or not. And you don't have a baseline to start measuring metrics. Let's repeat this with me, guys. If you don't measure it, you can't manage it. If you don't measure it, you can't manage it. So if you don't have a couple grows underneath your belt where you know that you should be gaining an average yield per plant if you are vegging this amount of time, it's flowering, and you're growing the same consistent strain every single cycle, right? You can't be growing one strain on this grow and then two strain, different strains on the next grow and then three strains on the next grow, and then you think you know how much each plant should be averaging per yield. No, you have to grow the same strain every single cycle guys then now that you have a baseline and a trend line going when you incorporate these changes or you switch from a soil to a hydroton or rock wool or cocoa you're going to actually be able to measure the difference from your baseline you're going to be able to know if you're improving through getting your end product tested over at the labs you're going to be able to know if your profile is increasing or decreasing based upon changes you're doing. And remember guys, you, you only can make one change at a time. So if you are going to incorporate CO2 into your room, you don't change your growing media. Unless you have five or six years of growing experience, you do not have different types of styles of growing in your growing environment. I'm telling you guys, if you only have one or two grows underneath your belt, do not have cocoa and rock wool and DWCs and soil all in the same greenhouse or grow room. It's going to drive you crazy. You're going to be using a whole bunch of different kinds of nutrients and you're never going to be able to find success. Which goes back to my original point. There is no shortcuts. You have to learn how these plants grow. You have to become familiar with how they're supposed to look, how the colors change from when you go to veg to flower and the, the transition day. You have to become confident in your relationship with these plants. In the military, they would always say, keep it simple, stupid. I've changed it now to keep it simple, silly, because I don't like to use aggressive behavior anymore. But let's say it together. Keep it simple, silly. All right? Even in your grow room, you want success even for your personal stuff. When a problem arises, don't jump to the most severe worst case scenario. Jump to the most simplest things. Water, parts per million, pH, EC, temperature, humidity, light cycle, power outages, gnats, mold, botrytis. I remember the first time I jumped out of a plane, every single moment prior to the jump from putting on my chute, waiting for the flight, getting my butt over to the edge of the plane and just slowly creeping out. I just still, even up to this day, I remember how my butt felt when it was creeping out the little Cessna as I jumped out of the plane. And then from there, everything was just so fast. I just remember flying through the air, opening and landing, right? 
And then after I joined the military and started getting about 100, 150 jumps underneath my belt, I remember the ride up being just falling asleep and then the jump out actually being a nice slow experience. I actually remember jumping into a sunset and it felt like a five minute jump, but it was only about 40 seconds. That same experience is going to be like this for your plans. In the beginning, everything's going to be slow and critical because you don't really know exactly what's happening and then when something happens you're going to be extremely reactive and panicky and you're going to go through the experience as it being just a PTSD moment. But then after you get more experience and you become more comfortable with solving the problems, you'll be able to set up your grow rooms, fill the pots, transplant, clone, as if it was just this routine no big deal experience. Although through the entire experience, your eyes will be so refined and in tune to the plants that you'll be able to identify a problem a hundred feet away and know what to do without fatigue and stress. I hope this video was helpful on reprioritizing all of you guys before getting into growing on focusing on what's the most critical thing to do, which is gaining experience with your relationship to these plants. Have a great grow, everyone. Please like, share, and subscribe.